What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of 30 and 30 and today we're going to talk about body fat storage points. All of us have different body fat storage points. Some are blessed with, you know, not a lot of fat on our stomachs. Others, like myself, tend to hold a lot of fat in their midsection. And for most men out there, more often than not, it is gonna be in our midsection. For most ladies out there, it's gonna be in their thighs and in their butt. Uh, while some of us do have uh, better body fat storage points than others, uh, one thing that I want to make clear from the very start is that we cannot control where our body fat storage points are. Unless you're getting something like liposuction where you actually suck the fat cells out of your body, there is no way to decrease the amount of fat cells that you have. Uh, that's one thing a lot of people don't understand when they actually physically lose weight, that they're actually shrinking the size of their fat cells. They're not necessarily losing the fat cells, they are essentially shrinking the fat cells down uh, and getting rid of the fatty tissue, but the cells still exist within your body. And that's why you see people who lose weight and they can gain it right back instantly because those cells are still present. Now. A lot of people to start off the new year, I'm sure a lot of you who are watching this video may hear or may get asked, how do I get a flat stomach? How do I lose this? How do I lose this? I get a lot of ladies at the gym that shake their little bat wings at me. How do I lose this? Well, there's no such thing as spot reduction. We all should know that by now. You can't do all the crunches in the world and lose fat in your midsection. That's just not how it works. Now, if you had watched my contest prep over the past year, uh, you will realize that you know I don't necessarily lose um, a ton of weight uh, off my midsection right away. So what happens over time is that the fat comes off slowly, pretty much everywhere. Um, yes, you know there I do hold a lot on my midsection, um, but my body fat distribution is more more or less evenly distributed, which can be a blessing and can be a curse uh, when you're in contest prep. So if you're someone like myself whose body fat is more evenly distributed, um, you start looking better earlier, but it takes uh, a little bit more effort to get your entire body done. Now, if you're someone who, for example, has a leaner upper body than they do lower body, and you gauge progress from the waist up, that's a dangerous place to live. Uh, because you can't just pay attention to your leanest body part to gauge how lean you are. Uh, so let's say you are someone who doesn't have a lot of fat cells on their stomach and you only gauge your progress by how your abs are looking, how tight your abs are. You know, so you see a lot of guys on the internet and ladies that do the little pinch test of their skin on their abdominals. Uh, well, some people are just blessed with you know, not a lot of fat storage in their midsection. While that's cool, while that may look for a nice video, uh, there might have other body fat storage points that are in their lower body. And I know this is very, very common. I've seen it all the time. Um, and I appreciate it when actually people make posts like this uh, where they have like a six pack, but then like they have a ton of fat in their legs. Uh, and it's just, you know, really nice to see uh, that people are getting a little bit more open about it uh, as far as like how the, the fat actually comes off of you. And yes, how it does go back on. Uh, so of course we know that there's no such thing as spot reduction. Yes, we can train the muscles in that particular area to build it up. So obviously, you know, if you uh, have fatty arms, for example, you know, like I talked about the bat wing earlier that a lot of older ladies get, um, you could try to build up your tricep in order to occupy that space to have a little bit more tone, if you will. Uh, that that phrase is kind of makes me angry as well, but uh, so instead of having fat there, you have muscle there, muscle tone that is, 
and you'll look better. Um, you'll replace that muscle, uh, you'll replace that fat with muscle in that place. Uh, so as much as it would be cool uh, to have um, spot reduction or to be able to change our body fat distribution, uh, it's just not going to happen, especially when we're losing weight in contest prep. Uh, what we have to do is we just have to keep going and we actually should judge our conditioning off of our fattest body part. So for me, my conditioning uh, at the last second, you know, it's definitely uh, my abdominals and my glutes, of course. And I feel like a lot of, a lot of guys, uh, they don't quite uh, get their glutes to come in uh, because they're basing their progress off of their upper body vascularity and uh, I just shake my head when I see that because uh, yes, we all get super vascular, you know, up top. We even, you know, a lot of us get veins in our quads. Um, but if you're looking to do super well at a show, you know, you definitely have to have some kind of glutes. Uh, if you just have faint glutes uh, in a show, at least in natural bodybuilding, you're not going to do particularly well. Um, not that I'm all for chasing glutes, but I mean, it's definitely one of the things that you should have uh, if you're looking to be competitive as a bodybuilder. So don't base our progress off of our leanest body part, base it off of our fattest body part, and that'll make sure you get to the conditioning that you're in. Now, when you start to gain more weight back, um, it comes on you know, at different rates in different places. Uh, for me, at least, you know, it definitely came back to my midsection first. Uh, which is a little bit disheartening, obviously, to see it come directly back to your midsection. Uh, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, the fat is going to go where it wants to go. You can't control it. You can't beat yourself up about it. Uh, if you have great body fat distribution and you're blessed with you know, abs year-round, more power to you. I mean, I have faint abs year-round, but I'm just not blessed like that because, like I said, my body fat is a little bit more evenly distributed over my body. Uh, so that's it for today's video, guys, on body fat distribution and how it's going to affect your contest prep. Uh, be sure to tune in to, to tomorrow for another episode of 30 and 30. I'll see you then.